Let me ask you this. Since you played D1, what is something about being a D1 player that maybe, or being in a D1 program that maybe people don't know about that they should? And by people, I mean like high schoolers that are D1 or bust. Like, give me an insight of like, you might want to know about this that no one talks about. Yeah. I mean, I could give you a bunch of things. The first thing that would immediately come to my mind is like, there are politics out, you know, there, there are heavy politics, especially at that level, because you have to keep in mind, just like every kid wants to probably play D1, every coach wants to be a head D1 coach. So if you're an assistant D1, you're close, but you're not quite there. But the way they kind of structure things too, and this is kind of what happened to me, but you have a coach that recruits you. Well, that they have, you know, at least in basketball, you have four coaches, they recruit you, but there's carryover. So, you know, there might be the one guy that recruits California and the other guy recruits the East Coast and they each get a point guard. Well, they're both going to be vying to the head coach to play their guy that they recruited. And unfortunately, the guy that recruited me left right after my freshman year. So like he was always vying for me, pushing for me. But that kind of, you know, disappears once that guy leaves. So there's a lot of politics as well between assistants where they want their guys to play because they recruited them and they want them to look good. Like, Hey, I recruited that kid. And that also carries to them hopefully getting coaching jobs. So that'll be, I don't know if that helps anyone too much, but it's just like, it's just an interesting thing that most people don't know about the dynamics of that stuff. And that makes me think about walk-ons, right? I've had two kids in the past. One was a two, both were 2000 point scorers in Kentucky, right? Both went D one. And both sat the bench because of politics and you just can't play a walk on over a scholarship player. Right. And they could not sit the bench because they're like, I'm better than these guys. This is not fair. And they both transferred down to NAI programs, which was the right fit all along anyway for them. But that's the thing. Like, you know, I've got, I got four kids four of my clients this year walking on D one and all of them. I said, do you know what you're getting into? Oh, I'll earn my way into a scholarship or plan time. And I said, just like you mentioned the politics, I said, you might think that, but you have to know that might never happen. You have to be okay with this. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is to play off that, we had a walk-on come in and he actually did prove himself and start to play. But when it came, they told him two years walk-on, two years scholarship. Well, those two years were up and he's going, where's my scholarship? And they go, we don't have one for you. Well, he's two years at a really high academic school, Boston University. He's probably going to start the next year, but he's going to pay full tuition. You know why? Because the school, the coaches, they're going to get, they're going to take another kid on a scholarship because they know he's not going to leave and he didn't leave. And so they got like an extra scholarship in their eyes. And it's like, we don't care that you produced for this. We don't care that we told you two and two. And they, uh, he ended up, well, now with COVID, some things happened. He ended up getting one, but. He still paid a whole extra year that he didn't have to. 